In today's video we're going to talk about item properties. Uh, properties are contained on all objects within PlanSwift. This can be your parts, can be your assemblies, can be your takeoff items. As we discussed in the report videos, um, the reports are driven primarily by the types as well as all of the item properties as you see listed in the column headings. So let's go to our templates tab. It doesn't matter what tab we're in, we could actually start a new tab if we like. But once you're in a tab, if we just click on the new item button, it's going to generate a new item. As you can see it added it to the list. And we have just a very basic property window. If we open the advanced button, you'll see we have all the properties listed for this new item. The type is just a plain item. It's not associated to anything. If I wanted to make a part or a labor item, I would simply change the type. Now these are all listed in the drop down. Now don't get confused here. It looks a bit daunting. There's a lot of different types in there. But the primary types that the end user is going to be uh, concerned with are going to be the type of material labor, equipment, subcontract, and other. Those are the five cost groups that are typically used and those are the five cost groups that the reports that are within PlanSwift are, are running on. So if I were to change this item type and wanted to create just a material item, I could just type in material and load up the material type You'll see the inheritance path at the bottom is inheriting from the part list uh, the type of material. And now it's loaded all the default properties within PlanSwift for that item type. Now some of these categories you don't need to be concerned with. Um, these other categories uh, really are items just describing what that object is and how it functions. It's not something that is typical of the end user going in and changing. For most users, uh, you're primarily going to be concerned with the item name, the description, the item number, um, the quantity. That's where you're going to populate your quantity formula. Your cost each and your markup percentage. Then you have your work breakdown structure of division, subdivision, phase, cost code, location, load, and zone again organizational properties that will transcend into your reports if you want to organize by any of those groupings. So for our new item you can see we created the item type of material it inherited our material icon. Uh, if we want to give this some generic name of 2 by 4 by 16 we could type in some description give it an item number and then all I really want to concern myself with is what, how am I quantifying this material. And that's where we're going to look to the takeoff data. I'm going to, for this example, at least just do uh, the 2 by 4 16 based on a linear total. If I left click on linear total, drag my mouse up into quantity, release the mouse, you'll see it populated linear total. So that right now is just going to use whatever linear item this is applied to it's going to def it's going to display the uh, linear footage if I wanted to then take my 16 feet so that I get a piece count I would just enter in linear total divided by 16 now if we want that to be a whole number or round up to the nearest whole piece I can select that text come to the top where the double parentheses and select round up. This will give me a whole piece count eliminating the decimal such as you know 2.5 2 by 4 16. This is a very basic example. You can certainly take it to the next extreme. Um, that would be getting into having different input items. Maybe I want to be prompted for what length of 2 by 4 this is. I would add a property and you're not limited to how many properties you can add. I could add a property for this 2x4 called uh, 
length. The property type is going to be a number. I can select what group or what heading I want to put it under. Maybe I want to put it under item. I can leave a tool hint. Enter the desired length. I can set that to be an input so that when I apply this to an object, it actually prompts me to enter in the length. Input conditions and compiled options, expressions, those are all advanced features that we'll actually cover in a later video. We can also set this to be a list if we wanted just a set list of lengths to select from. So we could set this list to be uh, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, and 18. But to allow only choosing from this list of items, we can check the box. And we'll go ahead and click OK. And now you'll see I have a drop down list of 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, and 18. If I want that to reflect in my name, again, I'll use those properties to my advantage. I'll do an open bracket and the word length and close the bracket. Now I have 2 by 4 by 0, 0.00. To get rid of the double uh, digits on the decimal, I'll go back in, double click, edit the length property, and set my decimal places to 0. Now I have 2 by 4 by 0. And maybe I want to use the foot indicator. Now based on whatever length I choose, you'll see that's going to update my item name. And I can also put that down here in my quantity calculation. So if I get rid of the 16 and again type open bracket length and close that bracket, it's now going to use that number, whatever number is selected under the length property in the formulation. There really is no limitation to how you use your properties. Um, you could have one variable piece of information or you could have ten variable pieces of information. It just depends on what type of an item you're wanting to create. Now our cost, as you can see uh, by default, and not everybody uses this format, so you can, you're certainly able to build your own but the way the program is set up by itself we've built it to have the cost each property so if I said my cost each was two dollars and fifty cents and I put a markup percentage of fifteen percent on that once I fill in the cost and the markup my uh, my cost totals my markup my price each are all calculated fields as you can see they've already got their calculations built in my price total is taking the quantity times the price each, which you can see our price each is now $2.88. What we've learned here is that you can just create a new item, set the type, enter in any variable information that you want to put into your calculation, build your quantity, uh, whatever formulation it is to quantify the item you're creating, add the cost each and the markup percentage. Everything else is taken care of. If you want to further have organizational structure, you could set a division, you could set a subdivision, a phase code, a cost code. Uh, you could use any of those properties and generate reports based on that information. So it really doesn't matter what type of item you're creating. It could be a part, uh, it could be a material part, it could be a, uh, an equipment part, a labor part. They're all the same. They all function the same way. They're just a different type and that different type allows you to then break your reports out in a fashion that allows you to get some detail.